What's up you guys, Josh here from JM Media and I'm testing out the DJI Osmo using a lavalier mic. Again, this is the firmware version where we don't have audio gain settings, uh, we don't have levels, I just plugged in a lavalier microphone into the Osmo. I put the Osmo on a tripod, I rigged it up with a ball head and I put the ball head on a, on a microphone stand and I'm actually, I don't mean to brag, but I'm getting really good at improvising when it comes to rigging stuff. Um, even though I don't have the DJI uh, tripod or the DJI mics, uh, mic holder or whatever. So um, when you have all these like little like ball heads laying around and microphone stands laying around, it's actually really useful to, um, to become a little more, uh, how do you say it? Uh, better at rigging things. So right now what I'm doing, I'm using my iPhone right here. Uh, so I, as I stated before, I put the Osmo on a microphone stand and on a ball head and I'm using my iPhone to control uh, where I want the Osmo to point. Uh, so that's a really neat feature. Um, we're in my living room right now. Um, I'm actually charging up my batteries for my Inspire 1 because I'm going to go flying tomorrow. And um, so check out these low light settings right now. I have the camera set at 2.8, obviously, with the X3 camera. Uh, I'm shooting at 4K at 30 frames a second, 1 30th shutter speed, and the ISO is set to 2121. Um, I put this on shutter priority setting under, under camera settings. That way I, I, I get better dynamic range and better low light performance when it's set to shutter um, shutter speed uh, priority. Uh, that way I have manual control of the shutter speed and the camera itself controls the ISO. Uh, automatic just didn't do it for me. It was messing around with the shutter speed way too much and the ISO way too much. It was blowing everything out of proportion. And since I can't control um, the camera fully manually while it's recording, I'm not going to set it to manual. I think shutter priority is actually the best option for me right now. Uh, the general rule of thumb is you should have your shutter speed set to double the frame rate. Um, but if you're not shooting anything like fast paced or anything, fast paced or anything, I feel like um, you'll be okay with that, um, with setting it to, like if you're shooting in an interview, 130th uh, shutter speed is okay if you're shooting at 30 frames. Because that way, you know, if people aren't moving a lot, you're not going to get motion blur. But if people are moving a lot, you might get more motion blur. Um, so that's why the rule of thumb is shoot uh, the shutter speed at double the frame rate. Uh, so if you're shooting at 60 frames, it's recommended to shoot at 100, uh, 1 120th shutter speed to get crispier footage. Um, even in slow motion, automatically in slow motion, if you're shooting at 120, 120 frames per second, the camera sets the shutter speed to 1 120th. But then again, if you want less motion blur, if you want a crispier footage, set it to 1 240th shutter speed. You're going to get even crispier footage and it's just going to look a lot better. But then again, you're going to have to find a brighter area to shoot because 1 240th shutter speed is, is quite a number. Um, so just remember to keep that in mind. So this has been a quick tip from uh, Josh Morgan here at Momentum Productions on how to record yourself or how to use your Osmo as a professional video camera even when you're not holding it. Um, I think that the fact that I can pan and tilt wirelessly without going to the Osmo is just a deal breaker for me in getting the Osmo um, because I think that's remarkable. Um, I don't have any other type of technology that allows me to do that besides the Inspire. Um, so I'm going to be using the Osmo more of a you know video camera whenever I want to shoot a, a documentary. I'm going to use it as a third camera. Um, I'm going to have my GH4 and A7S recording over the shoulder shots and I'm going to have my Osmo recording um, full shots or the wide shot. So um, that's basically what I'll be using the Osmo for. It's going to be, I'm going to use it basically as the main camera because it gives me a wide angle, wide angle view, and I don't have to be, I literally don't have to be behind the camera. 
I can <laughs> I can have my phone in my pocket. I can be controlling the A7S and GH4. I actually, what's really awesome is that the GH4 and A7S also have a Wi-Fi function. So I can literally be sitting 20 feet away and watching and controlling all three cameras with my iPhone. Guys, what has it come to in technology today? It's remarkable. I can... <laughs> I can record an interview and not even look at my cameras. I can be on my phone and going on Facebook at the same time. It's ridiculous. But no, if you're ever doing a professional gig, you obviously don't want to be texting or going on Facebook. Um, it's always good to have a sense of the camera. Like on, 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 on real video cameras like the GH4 and A7S, uh, it's always good to know how the buttons work, like what each button does. Don't always rely on the iPhone. You have to know how the actual camera works. The Osmo spoils us uh, because it's it's full of brand new technology, the gimbal and and all that stuff. It just it spoils us. But don't let it um, ruin uh, your knowledge of more professional cameras. Uh, that's one thing that um, I think is really important. So again, my settings here, 1 30th uh, shutter speed, 2121 ISO, I'm set on shutter priority. I'm shooting at 4K, 30 frames a second, and of course, since this is the Zenmuse X3 camera, I'm shooting at a 2.8 aperture. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the quick tips about the DJI Osmo from Momenta Productions. I will see you soon.